Hello and welcome to prompt number 106. I don't have a joke for you, so let's just, let's just get into it. We have chess pieces and a sprinkler. Okay, don't go together. This will be interesting. Ooh, actually, hmm, here we go. When I originally thought that does not go together, I immediately thought, okay, I can make that go together. So a sprinkler goes outside normally and chess pieces are made out of wood. So typically a sprinkler goes outside and what is outside? Wood. What's made out of wood? Chess pieces. Oh yes. So I originally thought a sprinkler for a garden is outside. And what else is outside? Chess pieces made out of actual pieces of a tree, like wood pieces. So I started sketching a silly, cute, simple little house with chess pieces outside. And then I started to think about what would use chess pieces made out of a whole piece of a tree? Someone very big. So I started to think about a giant and I thought it would be really cute to make a kid giant, like a baby giant. And that is what I did. I started to think about someone's house who was interacting or making giant tree sized chess pieces for a baby giant. And that is what I went with. So while I'm recording this audio, I am noticing just how echoey it is. If you don't follow me on any of my social media like Twitter or Instagram, I have recently moved to a new apartment and I now have my own office space, which means I have my own room, which means now that I am recording this, I haven't quite set up everything in my office. So it's very empty and very echoey. So I do apologize for the quality of all of the sound going forward for about a week of videos is going to be echoey until I set up everything and put some of your art on the wall. It's just going to be bouncing around and sounding echoey. So my bad. Could be worse though. Uh, I guess this isn't the worst of your problems. So let's talk about the art. Enough of my excuses. So like I mentioned in the sketch part of this video, I ended up going with the house with the trees that were carved into chess pieces and the giant baby, which I turned into a cyclops because I just really like the simplicity of this piece. I think going forward, I'm really trying to focus on what sort of illustrations are going to be really good for illustrated children's books and storybooks and just stuff like that. Not that detailed, complicated illustrations aren't good, but I do really like a simplicity and a really clean, solid look for an illustration. And if I'm trying to create my own children's book this year, I think it's really important for me to focus on creating things that would be a perfect fit for a children's book. So with this illustration, I didn't want to cram pack it with too many details. I wanted to kind of focus on bright colors, shapes, solid areas, the simplicity, but also the complexity of my illustrations. And I really like the way that that solid sketch looked with the Cyclops baby and the house. The house is the more complicated piece. And if you haven't noticed with my illustrations, I really like to focus with one piece or one section of an illustration being cram packed with details and the rest of the illustration being a little more simple or just larger areas that aren't, I guess, compact with details. So they're a little bit more simple. They have more of an area for your eye to rest while there is an area with more complexity. So obviously the area with more complexity is the little house with the chess pieces around it. And then the area for your eye to rest is the sky and the giant baby. So there's less detail with the giant baby and more detail with the little house. So going back to my roots, we have our little circle sort of spotlight illustration where we have the grass where the baby is sitting and we have the chess pieces and the house all sitting on the grass. And then we have the semicircle sort of area for the blue sky. I just thought focusing on bright, vivid colors on this one was going to be the best bet. So that's what I did. And as for why I made the person who owns this house 
uh, a mouse? I don't know. I guess I've gone 100% furry. I just find that certain animals have so much more variety than drawing a human over and over again. It gets kind of boring. I mean, how many times can you draw a human character? I think it's more fun to exaggerate animal characteristics. So I have a mouse person who lives in this cottage. Now, as far as scale goes, I don't know if you want to think of this mouse person as a human-sized mouse person or a mouse-sized human mouse person and the one-eyed human baby thing is human-sized or is it giant? I don't know. I haven't thought about these details. They aren't, I guess, super important to me. I just wanted to draw this drawing with this super thick baby and... I really liked the way the sketch was, and so I just went for it, and that's what I did. And, 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 that, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so going into this piece, I did want to focus on it being very bright and very vivid and focusing on color, so I didn't want to go super earthy for this one. Don't know why. Maybe it's because I do want to focus on more children's illustrated sort of pieces. So I didn't want this one to be dull. I thought it was a very happy scene. So I went with very bright, happy, saturated colors. Of course, I do still sort of, I guess, limit my color palette. We have green for the grass, blue for the sky, a sort of light peachy brown color for the baby, which I do duplicate for the chess pieces and the house. So we do have a brown, light brown, green, blue, and red colors. So we kind of focus on four different colors. I guess I do bring in blonde for the baby. I don't know why, but when I think baby, I think blonde baby. And I didn't want to give him blue eyes because I didn't want it to blend in too much with the sky. I did think that red or pink would be a lot more fun, especially if I could duplicate that throughout the rest of the illustrations. So for the flowers and the water sprinkler, it's a sprinkler, and some trimming on the house, especially the sprinkler. The sprinkler, I was originally going to make just that weird little pop-up tube thing that people use to water their yards, but I felt like that was so cop-outy. So I went ahead and later I penciled in a sprinkler that maybe kids play in, which I guess could still be used to water plants. But I think if I'm going for this more simple, fun, and I don't know, shape-driven illustration, I do think that this style of sprinkler is especially more fun and brings more to the illustration than the yard sprinkler, which was just like a cylinder with little things popping out the side. Very boring and I did feel very cop-outy for it, but at the same time I just felt like forcing things into this illustration isn't the best. When it comes to prompts, I feel like if you force things too much just for the sake of including them for the prompt, it doesn't do anything for your illustration. It just, it, at that point, it becomes including it for the sake of the fact that it was the prompt, which isn't entirely the point of these videos. The point of these videos is to draw something that I normally wouldn't draw and to push myself to draw new and different things that I wouldn't, again, normally draw. But anyways, I will admit that I may have kept this one a little bit more on the simple side because again, I did move to a new apartment. I was trying to keep my videos a little bit more on the simple side so that I could get ahead of schedule so that I could move. So I do feel really bad about that but I, I do like this illustration, so what's the point in giving excuses and telling you guys why I may have not liked this? I don't know. But I really do like this piece. I think it's simple. I think it's complicated in ways that it does need to be. I think it's cute. I think it's bright and vibrant. I like it. I may have not pushed myself too much with, you know, getting out of my comfort zone, but I like this piece and I don't know. Is there, I don't know, I, I like it. It's interesting, it has a narrative. I'm just trying to practice my storytelling at the moment. And yeah, I hope you guys like this piece as well. And I'll see you in the end card. Last week's prompts were harp and talking object, and I really enjoyed a lot of you guys' illustrations. They were so mystical, so magical. There was so much creativity, and I enjoyed so many of them, but we only have two featured artists, which is Lavender Artist as the first one. 
I really enjoyed your narrative with the goose looking at the goose in the harp. I love the background, I love the characters, I love the geese. They were cute, thank you so much. And we have Prodigious Parakeets making a fool of me. I really love how simple your style is, but at the same time, it's so bright and colorful. And I love the boldness of it. It's so cute. Thank you so much for joining in, everybody. I love your pieces, and I will see you in the next uh, video. Goodbye. Bye.